Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. We want you to stand at this time and we want you to lift your right hands with us as we make declarations in this place in the name of Jesus. As we make confession of our faith and who we are in Christ in the name of Jesus. Amen. And we say in the affirmative because we believe the word of God. God's word is powerful, is quick, is sharper than any two-edged sword. And his word can do it tonight as we declare it. And sons, sons and daughters know, amen, how to declare, how to assess what belongs to them. So I decree and I declare, I declare that, I that I am blessed of God. I decree and I declare, I declare that, I that I am blessed of God. That I am favored of God. I decree, and I, I decree and I declare that I'm blessed with all spiritual blessings, I am with all spiritual blessings. and I'm seated in heavenly places in, heavenly places. in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. I, decree I, declare I decree and I declare that I'm blessed of God, I'm blessed of God. and I'm highly favored, I'm highly favored. And, I'm and I'm blessed with all spiritual blessings, and I sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I decree, I, declare I decree and I declare that I have been chosen, have been chosen before the foundation of the world. The world. God have chosen me. God have declared me to be holy. God have set apart, set me apart. I'm blameless in his love. I am, I decree and I declare that I'm predestinated that I am adopted unto Jesus Christ for his good pleasure and for his will. I want you right there to go ahead and give the Lord praise as we make these declarations in the name of Jesus. As you believe God's word, I want you to open your mouth and bless him. and give, Hallelujah! And give him the praise. Give him the honor. Give him the glory. Give him thanks. Give him praise. I decree and I declare that I was made for the praise of his glory. I decree and I declare that I am accepted in the beloved. I decree and I declare that I was made for his glory. I decree and I declare that I am accepted by God. That God is for me and not against me. I decree and I declare. That I am redeemed, I am redeemed by, the Jesus. by the precious blood of Jesus. I decree and I declare, I and I declare that I am forgiven of my sins, of my sins according, to the of his grace. according to the riches of his grace. I decree and I declare, I and I declare that I am marked, marked by God. He knows my name. He, my name. he, have, chosen he have chosen me before the foundation of the world. I decree and I declare that I am not weak, but I am strong. I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I decree and I declare that I am above and not beneath. I decree and I declare that the Lord is with me. He is with me in my going out. He is with me in my coming in. I decree and I declare that I am protected by God, that I dwell in the secret place. I decree and I declare I will not fear any evil, for the Lord God is with me, whithersoever I will go. I decree and I declare that I am sheltered under his wings, under his protection. I decree and I declare that I have all that I need and more than enough. I decree and I declare that I lack nothing because he is my shepherd. I shall not want. Somebody begin to lift your voice and give the Lord praise. Lift your voice and give the Lord praise as you declare, as you believe his word. Give him praise in the house. Give him praise. Ah! Jesus, give him praise. Give him honor. Give him glory. 
Give him praise tonight. Give him thanks. For the Lord is worthy. Worthy of our praise. Worthy of your honor. Worthy of our glory. Worthy to be praised. Come on and lift up your voice and give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. Bless your name, Lord. Bless your name in this house. We praise you, God. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for choosing us. Thank you, Lord, for being with us. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We praise you, God. We worship you, Lord. Fill this place with praise. Fill this place with worship. Open your mouth and bless him. Open your mouth and give him glory. Open your mouth and declare your God in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Oh God, we bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. Yes, we bless your name. We send up high praises to you, Lord. We send up high praises to you. High praises in our mouth. High praises in our lips, Lord. We bless you in the sanctuary. We bless you in the sanctuary. Oh, bless ye the Lord. Bless ye the name of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary. And bless ye the, all the servants of the Lord. We praise his name. We worship him. And we glorify his name. Thank you, Jesus. God is worthy to be praised. Somebody worship the Lord tonight. Somebody give him glory. Somebody give him thanks. Hey. Oh Jesus, I give you praise. Hallelujah. 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 If it wasn't for your grace. Hallelujah, Lord. I call it grace. Grace. Grace brought me here. If it wasn't for your grace, I call it grace, 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 grace brought me here. Somebody give me praise. I call it grace, grace, grace brought me here. If it wasn't for your I don't need to tell you to praise God. I don't need to tell you to thank God. I don't need to tell you to celebrate God. I don't need to tell you to live up God. For it's the grace of God. Had it not been for your grace, never would have made it. Never would have made it without you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your grace. Your great grace. And your great power. Your great grace and your great power you know when the Lord gave me that team I never had the full understanding of what it meant but now I know great power and great grace it was not just simply power and simply grace but great power and great grace and tonight as I stand 
I want to thank God for that great power and that great grace that is holding me, holding us, and holding you. I give God praise and I give God thanks. You know, as we would have planned, our Apostle Hamilton was supposed to be our guest speaker yesterday. <laughs> and all of a sudden, out of the blue, Scarborough Airlines seemed to be on strike. Not only that, but the weather. And so she could not make it. But God was here. Somebody lift your hands and give God praise. We into our second night. And they are still haven't given any proper word. Nothing as yet. But God is here. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you that you are always with us. And you always hear us when we call. I thank you that you are not a disappointment. I thank you. Our faces, you promise, will be radiant. Those that look to you. Our faces will not be made ashamed. For it is in you, God, that we trust. It is in you we put our confidence. We put not our confidence in flesh, in chariots, in kings, but we put our trust in you. We thank you, God, tonight for how you brought us through yesterday. The wonderful time that we spent in your presence. And now tonight we are here. And we thank you, Lord, for your presence that is notable, is tangible. It is here. You are here with us. And even so, in recognition of your presence, we lift our hands even now, God, and we acknowledge your presence. We acknowledge you in our midst. You are here to bless. And I thank you, Lord God. Your Holy Spirit is also here. And I pray to him even now that he will lead. He will guide. He will direct. I give myself completely over to you. Use me as a channel. Whatever you want to relate to your people. I am here, Lord. Make my tongue, Lord, as a ready writer. Make me an instrument for you, God. Use me for your honor and for your glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. And for this, Father, we give you thanks. And we give you highest praise. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be exalted. There are two things clearly in my mind that I know the Lord wants me to do here tonight. As around after two, early in the morning, he would not let me sleep. <laughs> and there as I waited before him, I don't know if you have ever experienced this, but I put my hands, I begin to write and it's like if he was just bringing things and revealing things amen and i want you to turn your bibles tonight to second timothy chapter two just verse one and it would i would have told the others that things are going to be a little different in these services God is now stereotype God. And once we follow his leading, he'll do it well. Could we read this portion of scripture together? 2 Timothy 2.1 Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Let's read it again for emphasis. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. This is the Apostle Paul 
writing to his son Timothy. One he would have met as we go to Acts chapter 16. he came to Derb and Lystra on his missionary journey scripture tells us that he would have met a certain disciple and I want you to note that when the word of God clarifies something it's for a purpose he didn't just say a disciple he said a certain disciple which distinguishes him he says his name was Timotheus, the son of a certain woman which was a Jewess and believed. But his father was a Greek. But scripture tells us that he was well reported by his brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. And he, would Paul have to go forth with him and took him and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters for they knew all that his father was a Greek. So he was of mixed race. And you know when there's mixed race, there's always a lot of differences. But isn't it beautiful that Timothy did not allow the mixed races to cause him to be shaken? He lived a life that was outstanding. The Bible says he was well reported. He was a man of character. And that is something that we, it's very rare today. I don't know about you, but once before character makes something, you couldn't choose leaders just because you could choose them. There had to be people of character and integrity. But you know today we are in a banana republic. Anything goes. Lord help us. You put your hand on anybody and just or anybody who wants to be a leader. But not so with God. God is outlining his word, the criteria for leadership. They say that this young man, even though he was young, he was an example. He was well reported among the brethren. And not only that in his hometown, but he was so well reported, the word of God said it reached all the way to Iconium of how standing this young man was. And so because of his character, Paul chose him to carry him with him because he knew that he would have been beneficial to the ministry when you look at first timothy chapter one we also have a background of this young man in first timothy chapter one and we pick it up from verses three he was speaking to timothy as he wrote to his son he says and i besought thee to abide still at Ephesus. This is where, as Paul went about his missionary journey, setting up various churches, one of the things I note about him, he did not just set up a church and then move on. He placed elders, he placed pastors in place to look after the people of God. And so he would have chosen Timothy. After Timothy was going around with him, he said to him, I want you to stay in Ephesus to build up the people there. He says, when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some of them that they teach no other doctrine, nor give heed to fables or endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith, so do. Verse 5, now the end of the commandment is charity, out of a pure heart and of a good conscience, and of a faith on fame. So he would have placed Timothy at Ephesus to overseer the people of God there. And he would have charged him that he would have speak the things that become a sound doctrine. And to build them up with that on faith, which is in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And so in his second letter, he writes to this young man because he's young. And when you're young, you need much encouragement. I thank God for those who encouraged me when I first started. You know, those that would have come after and then you tell you, no, that was a good word. <laughs> I'm praying for you. Those things meant a lot. And they keep you going. Amen. And so this is the same thing that Paul wanted to encourage his son, Timothy, because being a pastor was not an easy task. He needed much encouragement. And that is why he wrote in his second letter, in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1, he says, Thou therefore, my son, I want you to be strong. And how many of us know whether you're in the ministry or whether you're a single person worshiping God, God calls on us to be strong. Especially in a time like this, when there's so much persecution and there's so much falling away from the faith, from the tenets of Jesus Christ, you will need to be strong. If you're not strong, you'll be an easy casualty. You'll be an easy run over. Persons will be able to come in and manipulate you. People will be able to come in and deceive you. But as a leader, Paul was calling on Timothy to be strong. And what does he mean here as he speaks to him of being strong? It means here to be strengthened, not necessarily a physical strength. Paul was trying to convey to Timothy that he needed to be strengthened inwardly. In his spirit. You see. It's one thing to have your physical man strong. But if the spiritual man is not strong. You're bowled over. For it's the spirit. That has to be strengthened in order to. Keep you. Focused. And to keep you positive and keep you going on serving God. So you need to be strong. Not in your flesh. But you need to be strengthened inwardly in your spirit when he was telling him to be strong strong in the grace he was telling him i want you timothy as a young pastor to have that spiritual internal fortitude to be strong and to be courageous as a leader don't mind you're young as the word of God said, let no man despise your youth. Don't let anybody look down on you. And when you're young and God has called you, there are persons who will look down on you and think you don't know anything. But age is just a number. It has a lot to do with your maturity in God. You could be young and mature in the things of God. People will think sometimes that you're young, so you, know, you don't know nothing. But you can be young and strong. In the Lord. And he was encouraging him to have that internal fortitude. To have that strength that would reinforce him. You know that we need that spiritual reinforcement. That spiritual reinforcement that comes from above. That spiritual reinforcement that comes with God's mighty power. I remember back in the day. Our assistant pastor used to call it spiritual stamina. You need that spiritual stamina to be able to stand. And I want to thank God tonight for the spiritual stamina that he has given to us. And bring us through these 41 years because it has not been for the strength and the internal fortitude we would have been run over. I have much ex um, different experiences when I first began. The different things and the different persons who came to see if I was, you know, a run over. But they fail. Amen. I give God praise tonight. For the internal fortitude. That internal strength. That spiritual stamina. To be able to stand. That ability to be able to hold your ground. That ability to be able to maintain a position in your faith and in God. That's the strength I'm talking about. It's not merely a, 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 a physical strength where you flex your muscles that everyone can see, but you must have that spiritual muscles. 
being able to stand fast in the Lord. Somebody give the Lord praise and be able to stand on your two feet and be able to be stable in God and at the end of it to be upright and to live a life of integrity. That's the strength that I'm talking about. And that's the strength that God wants for us to have because these are different days that we are living in. The days that we are living in have gone past what Timothy and the others have to face. And so God also wants us to be strong in him. The word of God tells us in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Be strong in who? In the Lord. That's where our strength comes from. That's what the psalmist says. I will lift my eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help, my strength. My everything comes from the Lord that makes what? The heavens and the earth. That is what the word of God tells us that apart from God, apart from Jesus, apart from abiding in the vine, apart from remaining in him, we are nothing. We might have the enthusiasm and we might have the, you know, that, that, that thing within us. But if you don't have the strength of God, you will not last. Am I talking truth? You will not have the endurance. To stand. You may start off. You may have the strength. But then you won't have the endurance to go every step of the way. That is what you need. The strength of God in these times. These are perilous times. As the scripture have told us. And so we need to be strong in the Lord. And also in the power of his might. Scripture tells us even in Zechariah 4 verse 6. That is not by might. God had to remind them, it's not by might or by power, but it is by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen? Amen? That gives us that strength to persevere and to go through. So we need to be strong in the, the grace which is in Christ Jesus. Scripture also tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 13. That we are to watch. He says, watch ye. You've got to be on your watch. Because you have an adversary. Who is the devil. He is roaming about like a lion. He is seeking whom he may devour. And the word of God also tells us that we are to take heed to ourselves. Take heed to ourselves. Lest when we think we stand, we fall. We can't take things for granted. We, we can't think within ourselves that we can do it. We have to always rely on the strength of the Lord. Scripture tells us that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall walk and not be weary. They shall run and not faint. He said even the youths who are supposed to have all the energy and the strength and everything that you, you, you really need. He said even the youth are going to faint. They're going to grow weary. They're going to get frustrated. But when you wait upon the Lord, he renews your strength and he causes you to soar on your high places. So you have to be on the watch. The word of God says to stand fast in the faith. Quit you like men and be what? Strong. That's what we are speaking about tonight. As the Lord would have laid this theme concerning um, great power and great grace. That power can only be uh, released from God himself. And I'm sure that we are testimonies tonight. When we look back at our lives and where we have come from. We are testimonies tonight that have it had not been for the Lord. For his strength. We would have given up long. Do I have any people in here that know what I'm talking about. We would have given up long time ago. But the Lord strengthened me. That's what the Apostle Paul said. The Lord strengthened me. And he gave us the courage to continue until now. For hitherto have the Lord help us. Our help tonight is in the Lord. Our strength comes from him. That is why Paul, even not only to Timothy, but when he was praying for our those at Colossae, you will note that when you read the Pauline epistles that you will see similar things being mentioned or words of encouragement being mentioned to the various churches. And in Colossians chapter 1 verses 11, 
He prayed for them. And it's important that you be strong so that you will not be deterred or derailed from your faith. It's important that you be not sifted. That you be not, as children, tossed to and fro with every wind and song of doctrine. That you will not be individuals who have itching ears. Not knowing the God in whom you believe, moving here and there and everywhere. And at the end of the day, you have nothing to hold. Paul to, to Colossae in chapter 1 verse 11, as he prayed for them, he prayed for them that they will be strengthened with all might. That's the inner strength that I'm talking about. With all might, according to the glorious power Unto all patience and long suffering. This speaks of being invigorated by God. That invigoration, that supply of power that comes from God. And he was praying for this church, you know, because they were young churches that he formed. And so he, he wanted them to continue in the things of God. And so he was praying for them back there that they will be strengthened with that might that comes from above. That might that comes from the glorious power of God. And in note here, he says, unto all patience. Because at times we feel that we have all of this thing. We feel that we have it all. And we feel we know it. Hmm? But then we start off on the journey in a sprint. And then we find ourselves getting tired and weary and cannot be able to go any further. This is not a sprint. This is a marathon. This is a race. And so you have to run it and you have to run it with patience. The race that is set before you so that you will have the, the endurance. Somebody give the Lord praise. Running with a steady pace so that you will have the endurance because the race is not for the swift. Or the battle for the strong. But it's for those who will do what? Endure to the end. And we want as believers to endure to the end. We want to go right to the goal that God has set for us. Somebody give the Lord praise. So in order to do that, you need the strength of God. We are living in a time where many individuals are put, um, giving up. Many people are throwing up their hands. Many people are giving up their faith. But God wants us to stand. God wants us to be uh, firm-footed. God wants us to be stable and established and settled in him. And the only way that that can be accomplished is when we are strengthened with all might. Oh, somebody give the Lord praise. And all the glorious power. Because I do believe as the scripture just comes to me that God has not called us to fail. He has not called us to go halfway of the journey God have equipped us he have given to us everything that we need for this life and for godliness he has fully equipped us so that we will be successful in our Christian journey somebody give the Lord praise and glory and so he wants us to be strengthened with that spiritual might the internal fortitude that I'm talking about I'm running this race with the patience and not only that some people like to leave out this part with the long suffering because there's long suffering in it some people can't take the suffering part give me the joy and give me the blessing Lord but when you come to that suffering leave me out but if we be partakers in the suffering we shall be also partakers in the glory that will be revealed in the Lord Jesus Christ somebody give the Lord praise Somebody give the Lord thanks. And as I'm speaking to you, I sense in my spirit that some of you have come to the ending of yourself where you feel as though you are in a wilderness experience. You come to church, yes, but you feel as though you are in a patch area. You're dry and you feel as though you have no strength to, to go. But God is here tonight and he is here to release strength in your life and to give you that courage, that invigoration that you need that comes from the spirit of God that can pick you up again. Somebody give the Lord praise. He has the power to pick you up, to turn you around. And to put you on your way again, running in the name of Jesus. Somebody raise your hands and give the Lord. Hey, Kabo Shaya. Give the Lord the highest praise. Lord, we praise you. 
Lord, we thank you for your strength, your strength tonight, Lord, that you have come to download in your people. Ephesians 3, as he prayed for the church there at Ephesus as well, in verse 14 to 16, he says, you know, as an apostle, and, and this came, comes up from the word, the Bible says that Paul had a care for the churches. He had a concern. That was his manner of life. Amen. That he had a concern for the churches. All the churches that he would have formed. Even those that he would not have formed. And he would have sent letters of encouragement to. He had them on, their, on his mind. And that is why he told the church of Ephesus. In chapter 3, 14 to 16. He says for this cause. I am praying for you. And I bow my knees. Oh God I give you praise. I bow my knees to the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. I bow my knees to the one of whom the whole family and the heavens and the earth is named. I bow my knees before him and I pray for you, church at Ephesus. I pray for you that God may grant you out of his resources, out of his divine supply, out of his riches of his glory. I pray for you. That you may be strengthened. Oh God, I give you praise. I give you praise. In the inner man. With all might. And with all power. Somebody give the Lord praise. It's about the inner man. If the inner man is strong. Then you can make it. If the inner man is strengthened. It doesn't matter what comes your way. You can brace the storms. If the inner man is strengthened. Doesn't matter the challenge that come. Your faith has gone down. Your roots have gone down. You are anchored in God and in Christ. Nothing but shall any means move you. Somebody give the Lord praise and give him glory. Because you have that eternal fortitude. That strength. That inner strength that comes from God. That even if you get a taught name. That ain't moving you. Hallelujah. If you're being challenged at your work, that ain't moving you. If you're challenging your church, you're not resigning because uh, that inner strength is within you. You know the one who has called you. And you know the place to where he has called you to be. That inner strength that he speaks of not only speaks of revigoration, but it talks about reinforcement by his mighty power. With might. By his spirit in the inner man. That's why when we look in the word of God. In Joshua chapter 1. We see the Lord reminding Joshua. Over and over. He said Moses my servant is dead. But only be thou strong. And very courageous. I want you to be that, that strength there, that strong that he mentions there in Joshua chapter 1 6 speaks of confidence you must be confident in the God in whom you serve you cannot be of two minds and you cannot be a person who is wavering you have to be confident in the God in whom you serve of whom you receive your divine supply of who you receive your spiritual energy. You don't receive your spiritual energy from any outside force. You receive your spiritual strength and power from the most high God. Somebody give them praise and give him honor. God wants to strengthen us. In this night of this deeper life service. He has given me two assignments. One I'm doing now. Two I will do at the end. That is why... The Apostle Paul in 2 Timothy 1, verse 3 to 8, and I will read that portion. He says, I thank God, whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, without ceasing. I have remembrance of thee. Oh Lord Jesus, I give you praise. You see the man? You see the heart of the man? He's praying for his son. He's praying for the churches. 
but he addresses this letter personally to his son in the faith. And he says, I have remembrance of you in my prayers night and day. I am praying for you constantly, Timothy. I know the job and the task that you have to do. And I am on my knees constantly before God that you will not be a failure. That God will strengthen you. He says, yes, I, I'm not here, but I'm writing this letter, and I have a desire in my heart to see you. I want to see you in the flesh. He says, be mindful of you, mindful of thy tears, that I might be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwell first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, I am persuaded that is in thee also. He said, wherefore I put thee in remembrance, Timothy, that you stir up the gift. Because at times, let me tell you something, and every one of us can attest to this, at some point in time, if you have not faced it yet, you're going to face discouragement. And the honest truth is you're going to feel like giving up. If you don't come there yet, it's going to come. But Paul told Timothy, even in your discouraging times, even when there are doubts in your mind that God has called you, I want you to stir up the gift that is in thee. I want you to fan the flame that is in thee. I want to put in remembrance the laying on of hands by the presbytery and remember the one who has called you. I don't know tonight who I'm speaking to. Those that might just find yourself in a place where you become settled and you feel as though you can't go on anymore. Feel as though this ministry thing is hard. Fan the flame that is within you. Stir up the gift that is within you. He says, for God, are you hearing me? Have not given you the spirit of timidity. God call you, Timothy, to be strong. God call you to have that internal fortitude. God has fully equipped you with all that you need to stand every battle, Timothy. God has empowered you with his Holy Spirit. And he has not given you the spirit of timidity, but of power. Somebody said a power. power. A power of love and a song mind. Somebody lift your hands in this place and give the Lord glory saying that God calling us in this setting here to be strong. As I was speaking to you, I tell you that at 2 o'clock in the morning God won't let me sleep at all. Huh? Even the dog won't let me sleep. And as I get up, I had to be moving with God because I want God to give me what you need to hear. God says you need to be strong. These are times that our faith is being tested like it never was tested. These are days when words are not enough. God is testing the hearts of his people to see if you really mean what you said. If your yes is really a yes. Or is it just bare mouth talk? God says he wants us to be strong. Not to have any spirit of fear but of love, of power, and of a song mine. It speaks here as we look in the context of this passage. It speaks of being able to stand for the faith. This is what Paul was really writing to Timothy. When he told him to be strong. Because he knew that the, 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 the heretics and the Judaizers would have come in to filtrate. This new teaching that they would have received, this gospel that they would have received. He knew that the heretics and the Judaizers would come in. That is why he tell him, I want you to stand as strong as a pastor and teach the people the word of God. I want you to have that ability to be able to stand firm in the faith. This is what I'm talking about, being strong. The ability to impart the word of God to others. And also the ability to endure hardship. Some of us think that this Christian walk 
is a walk in the park. And it's only with blessings and a scream and a sin. But if you're going to be strong, God can pass you through some battles. God can cause some things for you to be confronted with. And even though you might shake a little, if your faith has gone down, if your faith has been rooted, oh God, I give you praise. If you have the full armor, then you're going to be able to withstand. You're going to be able to stand, and not only stand, but you're going to be able to withstand the arrows that the enemy will bring. So it's the ability, this strong, I even get to grace here, it's the ability to stand firm for the faith. As, as, as Jude says to those, when in his, in his writing, he said, I earnestly contend you. Contend. I earnestly write to you that you contend. And that contend means there to fight for the faith. Do you see what is happening in our time? When there's so many things that are coming in, it's not the Judaizers now. There's so many things that are coming in within the schools. Even to, 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 to um, confuse the minds of your children. These are rough times, somebody. Huh? And this is time that we have to have that strength to be able to stand and earnestly continue for the faith as Jew said that was once delivered unto us. Paul in his persuasion he says and if another come you see this gospel that I preach I am persuaded in what I believe. I know in whom I believe and I am persuaded that he is able to this life that I have committed to him, he is able to keep that which I have committed. But he warned them. And he said, even if another come with another gospel, let him be a curse. We have got to be strong in this day and age that we will not bow to the things of this world, to the agendas of hell, to the things that are coming in. We will stand firm and flat-footed for the faith which is in the Lord Jesus Christ. You can say hallelujah or not. You can clap your hands or not. Give God the glory and the praise. It is all right to talk about Daniel. Daniel had their time and the Hebrew boys had their time in the den and in the fire. But this is our time now to stand up for God and to be reckoned. This is our time now to display our faith for God and be counted because there's a cause. God wants us to be strong in him and be able to endure. He, he spoke to Timothy as you look at the, the word here and he says to him, 1 verse 2, the things which you have heard of me among many witnesses, the same, I want you to be strong, to be able to hold on to that faith and be able to impart it to others to commit. You see it there? Commit that faith to faithful men. Because there had to be a continuum. If the faith, um, the baton drops at me, then there's no continuum. So I have to impart. I have to pass on what I have heard and what was taught to me and pass on the baton. I have to commit. The word of God, the faith of God, unto others. So that the baton could pass on to the next generation. So that they will be in a place, when we are gone, to be able to teach others. That is what I want you to be strong. Because if you are not strong, then anything is going to come in and filtrate. And then you will not have any church at all. He says, I want you, Timothy, to endure hardness. Are you here tonight? Are you ready to leave? Enjoy what? Hardness. The reason why God allows all these challenges to come our way is to make us tough. To give us backbone. To give us spiritual muscle. 
God allows these trials to come. And that's why he said, don't think it's strange concerning the fiery trials that has come to try us. Though something strange has happened to you. He also said, let patience have his perfect work upon you. Let God have his way in your life. Amen. Don't try to jump out of the fire. Stay in the fire and prove God and allow him to work for you. Because these trials are working out something for your good. They are to mature you. They are to bring you to a place of integrity. They are to bring you to a place of strength in God. They are to bring you to a place of maturity. So you've got to learn to endure some toughness. Yes, you're going to cry. Yes, you're going to feel the pain. Because I've learned in my experience that God don't take the pain from you. You've got to feel it. Because you've got to learn to how to be acquainted with others. That go through the pain. So you can feel it. But God promised he can comfort you. Enjoy the hardness. This is no ride in the park. If you have not made up your mind, make it up tonight. Trials are in the bargain. Suffering is in the bargain. And that is what he told him. Enjoy hardness as a good soldier. He knew the example there because when a soldier makes up in his mind that he wants to be a soldier it means that he's given over his life to the state his life does not belong to him anymore he signs up and he goes up to the barracks to take on the training that would be given to him as suited and so paul was writing to timothy and tell telling him the same way how a soldier has to condition his mind condition himself to that training you too must learn because the the training for the soldier is not an easy one they have to drill they have to push oh lord jesus help me here tonight push-ups all kind of toughness crawling on your belly all kind of stringent things that you have to go through huh but it makes you fit are you hearing me it makes you fit for the task it makes you fit for the job. And so he's saying to him, endure hardness. Don't run from God. When the hardness and the trials come, don't run from God. Draw near to him. Ask him for the strength. Ask him for the endurance. Ask him to pour in what you need. Because God wants to make it tough. That you'll be brazen. Hallelujah. When some of us passed on and we were in the faith, we, we came along, we were weak. Anything move us. A little thought and then we cry. Uh, anything somebody says something, we run. But no. Somebody give the Lord praise. God bring us to a place we praise on. Amen. That those things don't move us now. Talk what you want to talk. They go over my back. Praise the name. I know the God in whom I serve. Amen. I know the one who has called me. Amen. I am persuaded in him. Amen. He, I have not chosen myself. He has chosen me. Praise the name of the... He has called me by my name. Praise the name of the Lord. And so I need to know this God in whom I serve. Amen. I need to be, uh, be, take, be able to take my ground and be flat-footed for him. He said, even if any man wants to strive for masteries, he is not crowned except he goes all the way. You want to do your studies. You want your masters. You want your degrees. You, you can um, don't do the work and then expect you turn up for the exam and think you're going to get the reward. You have to discipline. The soldier disciplines himself. And the person who is studying also for masteries have to discipline themselves. In the time and setting time to study and all these things. And if we are going to be soldiers and if we are going to be all that God will have us to be, we also have to come into a place of discipline. And many of us don't like that word. But it's the cause of the disciple. We must be disciplined. We must be able to, able to endure song doctrine. The word of God that is able to change us and to make us what God would have us to be. He says even the husbandman, the farmer, if he wants to be a partaker of the fruits, he has to labor. He has to put in that work in order to see the, the harvest. And so for us also, if we are going to be strong in God or in this grace, we have to put in as well. Yes, God has saved us, but we have to make an effort to be all that God will have us to be. Lift your hands and give him praise.
I talk about I talk about being strong. But strong in what? Strong in what? He talk about strong in the grace. This grace that I'm talking about speaks of the spiritual blessings that is found only in Christ. That is why we sang that song tonight, in Christ alone. It reminds us, this grace reminds us of the hope that we have in Jesus. Amidst our failures, amidst what we are and who we are not, we are giving God thanks for his grace that God doesn't throw us away. God, uh, he puts us upon the potter's wheel and, and he can work with any of us. As long as we make ourselves available, he's able to mold, he's able to fashion us, he's able to bring us to what he will have us to be. Not what we want to be, but what he would have us to be. That's grace. The unmerited favor. What we don't deserve. The unconditional love of God. When we look at ourselves, the truth is, we are a mess. But God loves to take a mess and make a message out of it. Many of us could look back to see when we first came in where we were. How messed up. How bound up. How entangled we were. But with the washing of the word and sitting and submitting to God and being disciplined and loving that word to work in us, we see the difference now. I'm not the man who I used to be. Some woman could say, I'm not the woman I used to be. It's his grace. It's your grace that has brought me here. Somebody give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. I am changed. I am newborn. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. And it's your grace, God, that has brought me here. I don't deserve it. But it's your grace that has brought me here. It is the grace of God that gives to us then that ability because look at us tonight there are a lot of things in this spiritual work that we will not be able to do but because of the download of God's grace he gives us that divine enablement amen that things that we thought we would never be able to do we are doing now when I first began praise the Lord persons will look at me and say he could never be a pastor man he too quiet but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I want you to say that verse tonight in affirmative together. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. There's so much of God in you. So much that you have not realized as yet. And God wants to bring it out of you tonight. God wants to pour out of his grace that ability to do what you could not do or cannot do. In your own self. God wants to pour out that grace. Whether you are in ministry. God wants to pour out that grace. You know with every gift that comes. There's a grace that comes with it. That is why you, you don't have to be like the other person. You don't have to try to be like this other body. Whatever, wherever God has called you. You just be faithful. And God gives you the grace for that task. For that call. Hallelujah to Jesus. And if you stay humble enough, you will see the Lord working on your life and pouring out on you and bringing you into a place where you never thought you would reach. He says, grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so tonight, I leave these words with you. Paul to Timothy, he says, therefore, my son, I want you to be strong. I've been through with you what that strength is talking about. Not a physical strength. But I want you to be strong in that grace. That grace that is the unmerited favor of God. That God endows you with. Enables you to do the work which you cannot do of yourself. Sometimes when you look at yourself, you see your failures. You see your weakness. You see all the things that the devil show you. But if you look at God tonight, he's able to make a work out of you. He's able to, do, to cause you to progress. He's able to bring you to a place you'll never expect. He's able to take you to places you have never been. He's able to make you into an instrument for his glory. 
just because of his grace. It's not because that you are better than anybody else. It's not because you have more degrees than anybody else. But it's the grace of God. The favor of God that rests upon your life. Because God loves you so much. He is, he is able to do anything for you. I come to you in prayer asking for the forgiveness of my sins I confess with my mouth and believe with my heart that Jesus is your son and that he died on the cross of Calvary that I may be forgiven and have eternal life in the kingdom of heaven Father I believe that Jesus rose from the dead and I ask for you right now to come into my life and be my personal Lord and Savior. Lord, I repent of my sins. I will worship you all the days of my life because your word is true. I confess now with my mouth that I am born again and cleansed by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name.